Early detection and treatment of sepsis can dramatically improve patient care and save patient lives. Over the next few minutes, this video will discuss five keys to reducing sepsis mortality. We will also be pointing out technologies that may be helpful in detecting and treating for sepsis. I am Michael Wong, Founder and Executive Director of the Physician Patient Alliance for Health and Safety. PPAHS is a national advocacy force for addressing patient health and safety priorities that are shared by patients, physicians, regulators, and industry. By doing so, we seek to ensure that the best medications, medical invention, and technology can improve care and reduce costs. PPAHS works to advance patient health and safety by developing and highlighting best practices and recommendations through better use and application of clinical practices and experiences, information technologies and checklists, and healthcare information. As the voice and support of ideas and innovation that can improve care, we encourage a health ecosystem culture of patient safety. PPHS is proud to be invited to be a member of the Sepsis Alliance and the Global Sepsis Alliance. Both sepsis.org and global Hyphen sepsis hyphen alliance.org are great resources and information about sepsis. With me to talk about sepsis and what you can do to detect and treat for sepsis is Dr. Ken Rothfield. Dr. Rothfield is a member of PPAHS's Board of Advisors. An anesthesiologist, he is Chief Medical Officer at Medical City Dallas, which is operated by the Hospital Corporation of America. Dr. Rothfield is not only a doctor, but he developed sepsis following hernia surgery. So Dr. Rothfield has the unique perspective of knowing sepsis from the point of view of a doctor and a patient. In 2002, I found out that I had an inguinal hernia just on the morning that I was supposed to run the Dublin, Ireland Marathon. Fortunately, the hernia was extremely small at the time, and I could ignore it. But over 13 years or so, it started becoming increasingly uncomfortable, and I knew that I would have to have surgery. I scheduled myself for the surgery the Monday before Thanksgiving in 2015. That way I could use the long holiday weekend to recover. I went in for what was supposed to be a simple procedure, and I had no idea that it would turn into a life-threatening venture. What was supposed to be a weekend recovery wound up taking months. One of the staples in the mesh hernia repair fell out after surgery, and a small section of my intestine became trapped. I developed excruciating pain, and extreme abdominal distension. I was admitted to the hospital at 1 o'clock in the morning on Thanksgiving Day. By Friday evening, I was septic. I had an overwhelming infection and was critically ill. On Saturday, I had emergency surgery where they discovered that I had a section of gangrenous intestine. That led to a large-scale exploratory laparotomy. As a physician with about 25 years' experience, I understood the potential worst-case scenario outcomes. I've witnessed enough cases where a patient comes into the hospital with an abdominal catastrophe and unfortunately doesn't make it back home. According to the CDC, more than 1.7 million people get sepsis every year here in the United States. Almost 270,000 Americans die from sepsis every year, and one in three who die in the hospital has sepsis. But here's what you can do, and I'm speaking to each and every one of my fellow clinicians. You can save lives if you're committed to early detection and treatment. You have the ability to decrease the incidence of sepsis mortality. You just have to be committed to trying. I would like you to commit to early detection and treatment of sepsis because you may not get a second chance to save a patient's life. But first, you have to know when your patient is suffering from sepsis. You must know at the earliest possible time when sepsis is occurring. Clinical studies show that mortality is significantly reduced if septic patients are identified at early stages of the disease process. In my own case, I was admitted on Thursday. By Friday, I was septic, but it was not until Saturday that emergency surgery was performed, which removed a section of my gangrenous intestine. In my opinion, patient monitoring would have been able to detect my sepsis earlier, and I could have had an earlier intervention. Monitoring a patient's heart rate and respiratory rate allows clinicians to detect changes over time while supporting hospital protocols for early detection of sepsis. Although nursing assessments taken every few hours may detect sepsis, patient monitoring can alert you at the earliest possible moment when sepsis is developing. 
You may not get a second chance to save your patient's life. Monitor for sepsis. Clinicians should be open to the idea that treatment needs to start immediately without necessarily knowing the source of the infection. The key elements in treating sepsis and septic shock include early antibiotics, early recognition and intervention, birth control, and hemodynamic support. Sepsis should be treated as a medical emergency. Sepsis should be treated as quickly and efficiently as possible as soon as it has been identified. This means rapid administration of antibiotics and fluids. A 2006 study published in Critical Care Medicine showed that the risk of death from sepsis increases by an average of 7.6% with every hour that passes before treatment begins. The sooner treatment is started, the better the prognosis for reducing the risk of serious complications or death. Work with and listen to your colleagues to improve patient safety and care. A Joint Commission book on improving staff communication summed it up best in its title, Communication, the Bond to Patient Safety. If you are a leader at a hospital, like I am, or a leader of a unit in the hospital, I ask you to lead your team in developing and maintaining a safety culture. As the Joint Commission said in Sentinel Alert Number 57 on the essential role of leadership in developing a safety culture, in any healthcare organization, leadership's first priority is to be accountable for effective care while protecting the safety of patients, employees, and visitors. Competent and thoughtful leaders contribute to improvements in safety and organizational culture. Getting people to work together collaboratively allows more patients to be helped. The use of medical devices and information technologies can improve care. Be open to using new technology to improve the reliability of this process. Here are some technologies that may be helpful in detecting and treating for sepsis. This is by no means an endorsement by us or PPHS or an exhaustive list of available technologies. Please determine what technologies best suit your clinical needs and organizational culture. If adopting a new technology is intimidating, talk to your colleagues in other hospitals or contact PPHS for a referral. Chances are we may know a clinician who's using the technology and may be able to help you out. This clinical education podcast is made possible by an unrestricted grant from EarlySense. Without ever touching the patient, the EarlySense system provides continuous patient monitoring for heart rate, respiratory rate, and motion to potentially allow the clinical team to manage early detection of patient deterioration, fall prevention, and pressure ulcers prevention. The Physician Patient Alliance for Health and Safety would like to thank EarlySense for their generous support of this video. Through the financial support of EarlySense, PPAHS can offer this video with full independent control over all programmatic and editorial aspects of the video.